Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Caleb got it right there. Yep, you got the start. Okay, so what? No, nope, nope, you got to go forward. You got to go forward. What are the first four books? Did you hear what Kaylee said, Jason? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we're looking for Luke. All right, Luke chapter 12. You know, maybe you older kids, maybe we ought to start playing games. We used to do what we call sword drills. Somebody would get out a scripture, and you'd go in your Bible, and you'd try to be the first person to find that scripture. We had a blast with that. We always had a blast with sword drills. Morning. So Matthew, the 12th chapter, and starting in the, let's see, where was this? Here, no worries. Yeah. All right, starting in verse 13. Who likes to read? Who likes to read? You got a Bible? Uh, no. no. Well, let me give you mine. I'm going to have you read verses 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so there's 13, 14, and 15. And then when you get to 16, stop. Real loud, real loud. Then one from the clouds. What's up, guys? Go ahead. Go ahead. Then one from the cloud, cloud said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide him the, to divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man who made me a judge or an uh, Let me see what the word is here. A judge or an arbitrator. Arbitrator over you. And he said to him, Take heed and beware and beware of so Beware of the what is the word here? Beware of covetousness. Covetousness. For well, one life does not consist in the abundance abundance of the thing. Possesses. Awesome. Good job. Alright. So Jesus is teaching. Levi. Leave William alone, please, okay? Leave him alone. Leave him alone. You can do that after class, okay? During class, leave, leave William alone. Alright? So Jesus is teaching, and all these people recognize, hey, Jesus is a fair-minded person, right? Jesus is a righteous judge, right? Jesus knows good and evil, right? If anybody is going to deal fairly, it's going to be Jesus. So here's a guy. He thinks that he's getting the short end of the stick. You know what that means to get the short end of the stick? No. What does that mean, William? Yeah, get the smaller portion, right? And he goes to Jesus and Jesus... Tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. <laughs> now, first of all, this guy didn't have any right to get the inheritance. Back then, let me ask you this. Raise your hand if you're a boy. If you're not a boy. I'm a boy. Raise your hand if you're a boy. No, I'm not a boy. You're a girl. Raise your hand if you're the oldest boy in the family. So that means you have no older brothers. You have no older brothers. There are two. Well, three if you count me. There are three people in this room. Actually, no, there are four because Josiah's hand should be up also. Because Josiah, do you have any older brothers? You don't have any older brothers. And you're a boy, right? Just making sure. Okay? So, Josiah, Xander, and Jaden. Well, the youngest. 
You got an old you got an older brother? Yeah, I'm an older brother. You got an older Tough luck. Tough luck. Tough luck. If you are the oldest boy, that it means you're a boy, and you don't have an older brother, so you're the oldest boy. In that time it was the custom that you would get all the inheritance. You know what inheritance is? You know what inheritance is? What is that? Yeah, everything that your parents had goes to you. So, Jaden, when your mom and dad would die, and actually back then it wasn't even your mom because when your dad died, everything that your family had goes to you. But it also means that you get to take care of your mom, you get to take care of your older sisters, you get to take care of your younger sisters, you get to take care of your brothers. Now, let me, let me ask one more thing. Who in here is a girl? I think so. And, Maybe. Okay, if you're a girl, put your hand up. If you have a brother, any brother, put your hand down. If you have any... Do you have a brother, though? Do you have a brother? As long as you don't, if, as long as you have a brother, your hand's got to go down. You see, that's, there's one special case that a girl could inherit, and that is if she doesn't have any older brother or any brothers at all. Yeah, Miss Faith's back here going whoo 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 because Miss Faith only has one sister, and she's the oldest. So, Miss Faith, Jaden, Xander. Josiah and me, we would be the only ones in this room to inherit from our parents. That's how the, that's how the rules were back then. What my after my older brother inherited it, he died. He didn't have any children. You plan to kill him? No. He didn't. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering if he was because he's asking that question because he's next in line. He only has one older brother. Gee, what would happen if my brother just all of a sudden died? Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Does your brother have any children? If when your brother died, does he have any children? If he has children when he dies, everything goes to his sons. If not, then you're in luck. Because you're next in line. But, but, Oh, while you're plotting to kill Kevin, just remember this. <laughs> William is plotting to kill you. <laughs> and believe it or not, <laughs> believe it or not, listen, listen, guys, listen, believe it or not, that's what happened in families. They would kill their brothers and sisters because they wanted all the money. So this guy comes to Jesus and he's going, Jesus! Tell my brother to give me part of the inheritance. No. And you know what Jesus said? No. The, the first of all, this guy, you know, he sounds like a lot of us. You know that? Do we say, do we say, Jesus, tell him to give me all my inheritance? Yeah. No, we don't. But you know what we do? That's not fair. They got more than I did. That's not fair. They got something I didn't get. That's not fair. I don't do that. I think we all do that. I think we all do that. Roman. I think we all do that at times. You can sit right there. That is not a godly attitude. You can wait there. Did you hear what I said? That is not a godly attitude. That's not fair. They got more than I did. Okay, let me ask you this. Who likes to get stuff? Who likes to get stuff? There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with liking to get stuff. I like to get stuff. But if I am constantly, you put your hands down. If I am constantly looking around at other people and saying, they got more than I got, that's not fair. That's a problem. That's a problem. First of all, 
nobody, 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 nobody told you that the world was fair. Are things unfair? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's life. That's life. I'm sorry. I wish it were any different, but sometimes life is unfair. Sometimes life is unfair. Sometimes life is unfair. Life is unfair. Deal with it. Deal with it. I'm sorry. That's how it is. Life is unfair sometimes. Here's the thing, though. The problem is we get our eyes on stuff. We want stuff. Now, is, Sandra, is there a problem with being rich? Is that a problem? Is it a, is it a sin to be rich? You know, you can be whoever you want. And if you're rich, that's great. I prefer Richard, but uh, that was a dumb joke. Y'all didn't get it. Rich is short for Richard. So if you want to be rich, no, you're Kaylee. You can be whoever you want. Jump yeah. Joe. All right, that's woo, right over all your heads. That was right over all your heads. Or as Mr. Howell was saying, that was a dad joke. That was a dad joke. He makes, he makes dad jokes. All right, listen up. Does anybody else want to read? Would anybody else like to read? Okay. Who wants to go first? Leah or Favor? Alphabetical order. Favor because Favor's got her Bible open. And Leah? No, she does. Let's just get her thumb in it. All right. Who's going to go first then? You're going to fight it out? Leah's going to go first. All right. Leah, would you please read verses 16? 17 and 18. Real loud, please. But let's say, let's say for sake of argument that this was true. 
Jesus lived over 2,000 years ago. The United States has only been around for 250 years. Coming up on 250 years. Not very long. Canada's even less. Canada's only been around for 150 years. Really? No. No, some of those buildings were built before Canada became a country. All right, so, anyway. You think Canada's young, you should see the nations in Africa. There are a lot of nations in Africa that were not nations before, uh, when I was born, so. Some of the nations in Africa are go way, way, way back. Like Liberia goes so far back, farther back than Canada. I don't. Cameroon got its independence about the time I was born. About almost about sixty years ago. There you go. That was after I was born. Mexico. Mexico got its independence just a little before Canada, back in the eighteen twenties. So, oh, United States, seventeen seventy-six. All right, but anyway, what I'm what I'm getting at here is that guy could have been an American. You know that, especially he could have been a Texan. Roman, leave your sister alone. Especially a Texan. You know why he could have been a Texan? Because Texans like things big. If it's big, it's Texas. Because for the longest time, Texas was the biggest state in the United States. Until Alaska became a state, then Texas was number two. Alaska's huge. Yes, part of America. And Americans in general, we got an attitude that says if it's bigger, it's better. It's true. It's true. You go to McDonald's. You ever go to McDonald's? No. Yes. You go to McDonald's, and what do they ask you when you order a meal? Do you want that biggie sized? Right? Don't they? Don't they ask you that? You know why? Because leave him alone. Because most people say yes. If it's bigger, I want it. And that's what this guy was saying. I got so much stuff. My barns aren't big enough. I got to build bigger barns. Then I can store all my stuff in my bigger barns. My barns are going to be bigger than anybody else's barns. And then I can say, now, take it easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. Be happy. Right? Now, let me ask you this. Is it wrong to be rich? Eric? No. 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 Some people believe that you are more righteous if you're poor. And that you are more evil if you're rich. No. I don't know. Um, no, you could be nice and rich. I know some people. I've, I've got news for you. One of the richest man's man's? Men. <laughs> One of the richest men in the Bible was Abraham. What? And Abraham pleased God. Abraham was a very rich man. But he was humble. He was humble. That's one thing. Number two, he served God. God said to Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your only son. Oh, I know this story. You waited a hundred years to have this son. Now I want you to kill him. Give him up to me. And you know what Abraham said? He said, yes, sir. He said, yes, Lord. He honored God. Listen, listen, listen. It is not a sin to be rich. It is not a sin to be poor.
poor. It is not, because you are rich does not mean you are righteous. And because you are poor does not mean you are righteous. Some people thinking, well, you know, the most righteous people are the ones that are very poor because then they have to rely on God for everything. I know a lot of rich people that rely on God for everything. Because we're supposed to rely on God for everything. But here's the thing. This man had a problem. He trusted in his riches. He said, my riches are always going to be there for me. Now, very recently, there came out something called Bitcoin. Who ever heard of Bitcoin? Oh, my gosh. Uh, it was fairly recently. Yeah, that's recent. That's very recent. Okay? And not just Bitcoin. There are other forms of currency like Bitcoin. And guess what? In the last year, a lot of them have crashed and become worthless. And a lot of people that thought they were very rich are all of a sudden very poor. Some, some are, some aren't. Some, some, uh, some of those uh, uh, currencies have completely lost all their value. Back almost a hundred years ago, we had a catastrophic thing happen to our economy called the Great Depression. In the 1920s. People were rich. Things were going good. The economy was going real good. And then all of a sudden, in 1929, everything crashed like a house of cards. And people that were rich became poor overnight. And some people couldn't handle it. And they went up on top of buildings and jumped off because they couldn't handle being poor. Suicide. They committed suicide because they couldn't handle being poor. Job. Job was a man in the Bible who was very, very, very rich. And God allowed Satan to come in and take away everything that he had. And not only did he become very, very, very poor, but he also was sick. He had boils all over his body. And everybody, even his wife said, Job, just curse God and die. Yeah. Now, this is supposed to be his best friend. And she is saying, Job, just curse God and die. But Job's attitude did not change. You know why? Job did not trust in his riches. Job trusted in his God. It's okay to have things. It's okay to have possessions. This, is, this was Jesus' lesson about possessions. It's okay to have possessions. Just make sure that your possessions don't have you. Just make sure your possessions don't have you. What does that mean? Don't rely on the things that you have. Don't rely on the things that you have. You trust in God. It's great to have a big old bank account, okay? It's great. You know what? If God tomorrow said, I want to make Dave a millionaire, I would say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I will accept that. But lately that hasn't happened. Instead, Dave and Miss Faith, we've been hit with one expense after another, one bad thing after another. And you know what? It doesn't matter because God is still my source. I depend on God. I don't depend on my paycheck. I like having good things, but the good things don't make me who I am. God makes me who I am. And so even if I don't have those possessions, I'm still okay with that because I still have God and He still has me. And God said, I will provide for all of your needs. Now, does that mean I will provide all of your wants? No. No. Think of it like this. It's like you sit down to a 
You sit down to a meal of spinach. Who, who said you? I agree with you. I agree with you. I, I agree. I agree with you. Okay. Just, just for the record. Just for the record, I agree with Kaylee. Ew. Ew. But here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. Now, I would much rather have a pizza than spinach. Can I, can I get an amen on that? Amen. Yeah. Okay, we got, we got an amen here. All right, pizza it is. Here's the thing. I've had I've had spinach pizza next it's actually kind of good. Seriously, seriously, seriously. You do it right, it's good. But let me let me go let me go back to my point though. Spinach is good for you. I don't care what Popeye says, okay? He eats a spinach. I don't eat spinach if I don't have to. Yeah, I don't eat canned spinach if I don't have to. Mm -hmm. It don't work. It don't work. That's just a cartoon. But spinach is good for you. Spinach is something you need. Pizza is not something you need. Pizza is something you want. God said, I will provide for your needs. That means maybe dinner is spinach. You know what? If, if my dinner is spinach, I am bowing my head before I eat, and I am saying, thank you, Lord, for this dinner. Because it's something I need. Now, if I sit down to a pizza, I'm bowing my head and I'm going, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I know how you like pizza. I've seen you eat pizza. I like pizza. I like pizza. I've seen, I've seen all you guys eat. I think I, yeah, I, I know. I've seen, I've seen you eat pizza. I've seen you eat pizza. I've never seen you eat pizza. Here's the thing. I'm going to put this in red. Sting. It's okay to have good things. Don't. Let things have you. If I have a lot of stuff, if I have a lot of stuff, and somebody comes in and steals my stuff, Levi, go sit down, please. You don't need that. If somebody comes in and steals all my stuff, I'm going to be sad because I lost my stuff. But I am not going to lose my life. I am not going to lose my salvation. I am not going to lose my faith in God. I'm not going to even change as a person. I'm going to still be the same pe uh, person that I was. I'm going to be the same mean person that I was before. I'm choking. I'm joking. I'm not a mean person. I'm not a mean person. Look, what I have does not make me who I am. God makes me who I am. And I will always have Him. So, if somebody comes up to me and needs something, I can give it to them. And it's not going to hurt me. Because what I have doesn't make me who I am. And that's what this that's what Jesus was trying to tell us. It's okay to have things. Just don't let the things have you. Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. All right. It's time to close up here. You know what they call it? You know what they call it? When you're always looking at what other people have, and nothing that you have is good enough, you got to have better. 
Jealousy, there's another word for it. And uh, there's, there's another word for it. Dominic read it when he was reading a scripture. And it was a word that I had to help you with. You remember what word that was? Starts with a C. Salvation doesn't start with a C. What were they teaching you at Conley for crying out loud? Oh, that's I thought you went to that school too. I did. What did they teach you there? Stuff. Obviously not if he thinks that salvation starts with a C. You remember what that word was, Dominic? I think that was like uh, uh, like uh, like uh, uh, like Close. You get closer. Oh, if we only had the time. I haven't done a hangman in so long. Hangman! I haven't done a hangman in so I can't do a hangman because you're going to run out of time. Covetousness. Covetousness. And the root word there is covet, C-O-V-E-T. Covet means wanting something that somebody else has. And in the Bible, the Tenth Commandment says, you do not covet. Do not covet. In other words, be satisfied with what you have and thank God for what you have. And stop worrying about what everybody else has. Stop worrying about what everybody else has. If God wanted you to have more, God will give you more. If it's a... if. You don't have because you're not working hard enough, then you need to work hard enough. But don't get all upset because somebody has more than what you got. Okay? Don't, because that's that's not a right attitude, Eric. Hey, you said it's like jealousy if you look at other people's stuff. I don't think Well, now there's a difference though between looking at somebody's stuff and saying that's cool. You know, I, 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 was, uh, I was in my car and some guy come by and he had an old Mustang. I love Mustangs. I used to have one. It's a car made by Ford. I had, a, I had a 92 Mustang with a 5 liter engine in it. Convertible. It was beautiful. Huh? I had to sell it because it had over, almost 300,000 miles on it. What? And it goes really fast. Wow. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. As much as I love that car, no, this guy, this guy, drove up to me and he had he had an old '65 Mustang. That was the first year they made him. Awesome car. You mean like a Lamborghini? No, it's even better. But even a Lamborghini, you know. Look, I can admire his car, but it doesn't mean I want his car. Okay. I could even say, you know what, I like that car so much, I'm going to save up my money so I can buy me one. There's nothing wrong with that. But when I sit there and I go, oh man, he's got a nice car. Why can't I get a nice car like that? There they have a problem. That problem is called covetousness. Last thing. Real quick, real quick. I think I'm, I think I'm, I feel, um, <coughs> has a Mustang. Okay, that's, yeah. that's cool. That's cool. All right, last thing here, and then we're going to bow our head and close our eyes. Paul said to us, guys, guys, I'm talking, which means you're not. Paul said to us that contentment and godliness. Contentment with godliness is great gain. If you are living your life the way God wants you to live and you are content with what you have, you're actually a very rich person. You're a very rich person. Bow your heads. Father, we thank you for this time.